The NSA can legally monitor some communications. Some Google Chrome extensions were found to be malicious, and OnePlus had a credit card hack. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for January 23rd, 2018. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. And now it's time for the news. Now, the week before last, the House of Representatives of the United States voted 256 to 164 in favor of reauthorizing the FISA mass surveillance program without any reforms or reining back of powers for the NSA. On Thursday of last week, the U.S. Senate passed the FISA Amendments Reauthorization Act in a 65 to 34 vote with 43 Republicans and 21 Democrats in favor, allowing Section 702 to live on, even though it was originally set to expire on Friday. This bill will continue on to President Trump's desk, where we will most likely see it signed into law. So what is FISA? Well, let's do a refresher course. It is the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, effective in 1978, and since amended with new acts such as the Patriot Act and the Freedom Act. The Patriot Act of 2001 signed into law many different provisions, allowing for surveillance and wiretapping without warrants. While this part of the act expired in 2015, the USA Freedom Act of 2015 took its place and renewed much of the surveillance through 2019. The Freedom Act did remove the NSA's ability to do mass collection of data via phone carriers, but it did not repeal all of the provisions. The FISA Amendments Act was born in 2008 and later on included a provision to be extended until 2017. This section, known as Title VII and Section 702, allows for monitoring foreigners abroad. While this section is only for foreigners reasonably known to not be in the United States, it does have some loopholes that American citizens have been concerned about, and rightfully so. And it is a big part of why we are hoping the Senate and House would reform the act before extending and passing it with some kind of call to force the agencies to need search warrants for data being the biggest plea. Now, two parts of Section 702 in particular are important. There is the backdoor search. Yes, it really is called the backdoor search, which allows for agencies to monitor Americans in contact with foreigners targeted and about collection, which collects data on an American that just so mentions contact data about a targeted foreigner. Section 702 allows for the NSA to collect data from telecom companies via their fiber optic lines where they enter the United States. Now, while this should only include non-citizens that are of concern to the government, this coincidentally also sweeps up huge supplies of data on unsuspecting Americans as well. There is no good way for a telecom to divulge just the data on a suspect while not including huge treasure troves of data on citizens as well. And according to the law, American citizens are protected from warrantless surveillance. So Section 702 is a huge ugly sore with a huge problem. This section also allowed for PRISM to be a thing, and in 2017, Open Tech Institute found that the FBI and the NSA had clearly violated the surveillance stipulations at least 200 times over the past decade. Now with regards to the vote, several different lawmakers who had previously called for reforms did not offer any kind of debate and then voted for reauthorization with a well-rounded list being available via ZDNet linked below. Five different senators did attempt to filibuster the vote, but unfortunately they failed, and this vote allows for the surveillance to continue until 2024. Four different extensions found in the Google Chrome Web Store, with more than 500,000 downloads altogether, were found to be malicious by researchers at network security vendor Iceberg. The extensions include stickies, light bookmarks, change HTTP request header, and new goal. Hopefully I said that right. All but new goal were removed by Google after being notified by the researchers. Iceberg originally found one malicious app on a client's computer as it was sending an odd amount of network traffic to an outbound connection. 
The extensions could use that connection to inject and execute malicious JavaScript code on a target computer. Now, while Chrome extensions do not allow for code from a JSON format externally, if an extension requests it using the content security policy and then enables a permission called unsafe eval, which is like an evaluation permission, that code can then be transmitted from an external point. The researchers suspect that this is part of a click fraud scam, which makes money based on the clicks of of a target computer, so the extensions were making the target computer visit ad-related websites. It could also be used to spy on the target machine without the user's knowledge, obviously. Now, since this browser owns 60% of the market share and is used widely in internal business networks, extensions allowing for external script access, they do create a concern. Another extension was found to be malicious last week by Peter Arnitz at Malwarebytes. Arnitz found an extension called Tiempo and Colombia in Vivo that redirected a user from the normal Chrome extension list, which is found in your browser menu, to a page that looked like the list of extensions, but actually bypassed a user's ability to manually remove an extension. The app was removed 19 days after being disclosed to Google. Now, while the extension simply clicked on lots of different YouTube videos, which inflates viewership numbers, it could be used for more malicious acts. Since it did try to keep users from deleting it by redirecting users from the actual extension settings menu, Arnitz recommends using Malwarebytes Free to automatically remove it. Now, if users do use extensions, it is always important to only download extensions that are from trusted publishers or just not use them at all. OnePlus, those are the makers of the Android phones originally dubbed as the flagship killers. They have confirmed that they experienced a breach of their payment systems after several different customers reported fraudulent activity on credit cards previously used to purchase phones from the company. On Friday, customers received emails saying that credit card numbers, expiration dates, and security codes may have been compromised. The email goes on to say that an investigation is underway and the system is currently suspended. The company is also looking into offering credit monitoring to users who have been affected. Now, to be clear, this is a breach of the payment systems on OnePlus.net. So if you ordered a OnePlus phone through a third party, you are not going to be affected. So how did this happen? According to OnePlus, the website had a malicious script installed that could capture and send data straight from a browser from mid-November all the way through January 11th. So that means up to 40,000 customers were affected. If you use PayPal to purchase one of those phones, you were not affected, nor were users who already had a credit card on file. So the malicious code was sniffing out credit card information as it was entered into the site. OnePlus does recommend users pay attention to their credit card statements and report fraudulent activity to their bank. This is not the first problem with OnePlus and security though. Last year, a security researcher found and disclosed a debugging tool that was left on the phone that could allow root access to the device. Another researcher discovered OnePlus was collecting personally identifiable data on users. And a bug last summer caused phones to reboot when making an emergency call. So needless to say, it has not been one plus is year. Thank you again to all of the wonderful people out there who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week. We are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment for the set, as well as open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. So thank you so much. Any little bit helps us grow the show. And in return, you will always get access to a bunch of extras on Patreon, including an audio RSS feed and early access to the show stories. We might even feature your adorable fur babies, just like these ones, in an upcoming episode. Super excited to see those. And of course, you can always send in your new fur baby pictures. I love seeing them. Check out the perk levels on Patreon. Thanks again for helping us keep the show completely independent. And if you cannot donate, hit that little subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.